Welcome to the hour of revelation and impartation. God wants to prepare you for the hour of visitation. We're living in the final days, the greatest days on earth. And God has chosen you to be part of the greatest move of the Holy Spirit. And God told me, reveal to my people the timeline, the Daniel timeline. Tell them that I'm coming back and coming back soon. Tell them their time has come. You have an appointment with destiny. God has prepared you for such a time as this. You're not alive today. And you're not called into the kingdom at such a time as this for nothing. God's got great purposes, a great future for you. There's more anointing for you. You have a divine appointment because you have such a calling in such a critical hour in the history of mankind. He wants you to know the plan of the Father, the heart of the Father, the will of the Father, that you may be about the Father's business and fulfill your calling. The most important person in the universe today is you. You have a specific calling. You have a specific appointment. You are chosen for a reason. And God wants you to fulfill that reason because you only have today. This is the last day in history, the final hours in history, the last great move of the Holy Spirit. The manifestation of the sons of God is right here, and you're part of that manifestation of the sons of God, of a glorious, victorious church without spot, without wrinkle. And you are chosen for this great move of God. You have found favor in the sight of God. And what you need to know is how to do what God has called you to do. How to participate, not be a, just an observer of what's going on. He wants you not to be a spectator. He wants you to be a participant in what he's doing. Because your call is so important. God wants me to walk you again and again. To equip you until you can rise to fulfill your calling. Because time is of essence. We're living on borrowed time. What we are watching going on in our world today with the global pandemic, with the financial meltdown, with the things that are happening all over the world, we know we are in the last days of the last days, the days that you need to know the will of God, the plan of God for the hour, because you are critical in what God is doing in the world. The first thing I want to say to you, my message is, the order of Melchizedek. What is the order of Melchizedek? How does that affect me in the end of time? What is it that I need to know and need to do in order to please my father and to finish strong? It's not those who begin. It's those who finish. We must fight to the very end. We must run to the very end. We must be about the father's business to the very end because Blessed is he who endures to the end. Because only those who endure to the end will be saved and rewarded for their work. That is why we need to understand the Melchizedek order. What is the Melchizedek order? That is the order that is calling an end time church to. That is the order that you are being called into. Who is Melchizedek? He was a king priest. And Jesus was after the order of Melchizedek. In the book of Hebrews chapter 7 verse 17, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. This was to Jesus Christ. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Jesus Christ came into this world for one purpose. That is to pay your, the penalty of your sin. That is to redeem you with his own blood. To reconcile you to God our Father. He was a priest. That means he had to take blood into the Holy of Holies. He had to take the blood, not the blood of animals, but his own blood. He had to take that into the Holy of Holies. The blood of your redemption. 
you were redeemed by the blood of Jesus. You were reconciled to God our Father through the blood of Jesus. You were made to be born again through the blood of Jesus. Only the blood of Jesus washes your sins away. Only the blood of Jesus prepares you to be what God wants you to be. Therefore, it is through the blood of the high priest, Jesus Christ. After the order of Melchizedek, he went into the Holy of Holies and he sprinkled the blood. It's the blood of testimony to say you are acceptable in the beloved, that you are now welcome home to the Father, that now you can be everything that God wants you to be and that you can now do everything that God wants you to do because of the blood of Jesus. There is no other basis of your relationship to Jesus. You must constantly, every day, every single day, you must ask for the blood of Jesus to wash you clean. Every single day, I need the blood. I ask for the blood to cleanse me, to make me acceptable in the beloved because the blood of Jesus washes away all our sins so that we are acceptable to the Father. You're a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek order is a king priest, eternal king priest order. This means that Jesus Christ is an eternal advocate for you. He is your mediator for, forever and ever. For all eternity, he stands on your behalf, speaks well for you to the Father because he has made you acceptable to the Father. And he is covering you with his blood, the blood of redemption. This is why it is so critical that the church preach again the blood of Jesus. It is important that today you meditate on the single thing that made you acceptable. You were not made acceptable by your works. You were not made acceptable by uh, your good works or anything that you have done. You are made acceptable through the blood of Jesus, not your, your religious commitment and dedication, your Bible studies and your, your spirituality. You are made acceptable only through the blood of Jesus Christ. You must meditate on what God has done for you because it's not what you do for God. It's what God has done for you. He has done it all. He has made you acceptable. That means you can be what God wants you to be, that you can do what God says you can do the, through the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Every day I pray and I thank God for the blood of Jesus because when I look at the cross of Jesus, it tells me how important I am to my father. It tells me how much my father loves me, that I'm the apple of his eye. The only way I know how much God loves me is when I look at the cross of Jesus. Then I know I'm precious in his sight. When I look at the blood of Jesus, I know I can overcome every obstacle, every temptation, everything the enemy will try to do to me is totally destroyed by the power of the blood of Jesus. The cross of Jesus Christ terminates, destroys the powers of Satan. There is no power on earth that can stand against the power of the cross of Jesus Christ. Thou art a priest after the order of Melchizedek, the eternal priesthood. Now this eternal priesthood, the most incredible and the most wonderful thing is, Jesus wants you to be part of the order of Melchizedek. God has made it possible for you to come into the order of Melchizedek, to be a joint heir with Christ Jesus. He wants you to know that whatever the Father has given him, you are a joint heir. You are a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Wow, what a wonderful place and a position to be in these last days. Until you know your identity in Christ, until you know what God says you can do, you won't be able to do anything with eternal value because it's not by might nor by power. It's by the spirit of the living God, by knowing who you are in Christ and what you can do through Christ because you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You have an excuse to say, I can't do what God wants me to do because God has brought you into the order of Melchizedek to make you a king and a priest. A king is a sphere of influence. A king is jurisdiction, dominion, authority. 
God has given you jurisdiction, authority. He's given you a sphere of influence. He has placed you where you are at this hour so that you can produce fruit where you are. God has placed you where you are so that you can transform your world. God has given you what it takes for you to transform the situation you're in. God has given you the, the blood to wash you clean and has given you the power of the Holy Spirit to empower you to do the will of God, not by might, not by power, but by His Spirit. All things are possible to those who believe. He has made you a king. And a king makes decrees. He rules and reigns. God doesn't want you to be the tail. He wants you to be the head. God delights in you. And he wants you to experience heaven all the way to heaven. Because heaven is not a destination. Heaven is an experience of God. Wherever God is, that's where heaven is. And I'm saying heaven is inside of you. The peace of God, the joy of God, the love of God. That sense of being well, of well-being. In his presence, there's fullness of joy, pleasures forevermore. In his presence. You're called to abide in his presence. To be a priest after the order of Melchizedek. That means you can worship in the holy of holies. Because only the high priest goes into the Holy of Holies. Now, because you have been made a priest after the order of Melchizedek, that means you can go and worship God in the Holy of Holies. You can behold the Lord in the beauty of His holiness. You can know His will. You can do His work because you are chosen. You are called and you are appointed and you are anointed after the order of Melchizedek. A king priest. And as a king, God has given you your sphere of influence. God wants you to change everyone in your sphere of influence. God wants you to impact everyone in your sphere of experience. Your, your, your place that God has prepared for you may not look good, may not feel good, but that's the place where God's power is going to break into that situation. When you begin to rise to your calling, when you begin to realize that greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world, when you begin to realize the bigness of God in the inside of you, when you begin to realize the nowness of God in the inside of you, that you can unleash the power of God in your family. You can unleash the power of God in your workplace. You can walk in victory because you're called to walk in victory. You are anointed to, call, to walk in victory. You are appointed to do great and mighty things. After the order of Melchizedek, you have been called. You have a kingdom. You are a king. Jesus wants you to walk this earth as a king, to think like a king, to act like a king because you're a king, because the king of kings lives within you and you are joint heir with Christ Jesus. You're a king. After the order of Melchizedek, that means you must recognize your calling. You must accept your calling. You must stop thinking like a human, acting like a human, behaving like a human. You must think like a child of God and begin to behave like a child of God because you are what God says you are, not what your circumstances say you are, not what people say you are, not what you think you are. You are what God says, a priest after the order of Melchizedek, a king in the sphere of your influence. God has given you dominion in the sphere of your influence. God has given you power in the sphere of your influence. Therefore, you don't have to, you don't have to feel like you're a victim because you're not a victim. You're a victim in Christ. The devil cannot take anything from you except what you give him. If you give him, your, if you give him weakness, oh, God, I am so weak. I can't overcome this. I, I, I'm a victim. You are not a victim because Jesus came to make you a victor. You can rise above all the shackles of yesterday, the problems of yesterday, the bondage of yesterday. You can break away from the status quo and break into a glorious liberty of the sons of God because there is a place of you. There's a place for you. In a, in, a, in, a, in a place that nobody ever thought you could come. A place of glory. A, glo a place of vindication. That place is appointed to you from the beginning of time. For this purpose you were born. For this purpose you are in the kingdom to show forth his power, his glory, his majesty. As a king after the order of Melchizedek. Every believer has been chosen to be a priest after the order of Melchizedek. God has appointed you already. 
You say, well, I'm waiting for God's appointment. No, you have already been appointed. You just need to be anointed for your appointment. God has already chosen you to be a king after the order of Melchizedek, a priest after the order of Melchizedek. He has already assigned you, given you a place, and that place is not being impacted by you because you're still thinking human. You're still thinking, poor me. You're still thinking, ah, it's impossible for me. Well, your God specializes in the impossible. Your God has called you to the impossible. He is calling you to the fourth dimension where all things are possible. When you see the invisible, you can do the impossible because you have been called for such a time as this after the order of Melchizedek. In the book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 6 says, and has made us, has made us, that means you and me, and all of God's children. God has made us kings, kings. It's time you think like a king. It's time you act like a king because God has made you a king. You have to accept your kingship. You have to celebrate your kingship because God says you are. The devil says you're not. Your family says you're not. Your friend says you're not. Your stinking thing says you're not. But God says you are. You got to believe what God says and take God at his word and become what God has already called you to be because he has already prepared everything for you. By faith, all things are possible. God says, I've made you a king. He has made us kings and priests unto God and his father. He has made you a king to have dominion, jurisdiction over the affairs of men. And he has made you a priest. That means to minister unto him after the order of Melchizedek. That means to go into the holy of holies and worship the Lord in spirit and truth. You can come into the holy of holies. You can behold the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. You can hear his voice. My sheep hears my voice. You hear his voice in the holy of holies. I'm calling this generation, this terminal generation, in this, in this final Shemitah, in these last days, I'm calling you to come into the Holy of Holies. I'm calling you to rise above the limitations that the church has put upon you. There's so much bondage in churchianity. There is glorious liberty when you come to the realization of who you are in Christ and what you can do through Christ. When you accept your calling, when you accept the anointing, when you accept the word of God and you take God at his word and then you will see amazing things happen, incredible things happen because God has already paid for your sins. He already paid for your future. Everything has been prepared for you before the foundation of the world. You do the done. It's finished. You walk in what God called you to do. You believe what God says about you. You say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm ready. You show me the way and you lead you. The steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. He orders your steps. That's why you cannot complain and say, well, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do, how to be a king priest after the order of Melchizedek because he is in you to willing to do of his good pleasure. He has made you a king and a priest unto him that you may show forth his glory. And I'm telling you, you haven't realized how big the God that called you and the bigness of your calling. You are not living to, the, to, to, the, to, 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 your, to your potential in God. You're not living to the highest calling that God has placed upon you. You're not fulfilling the call that God has called you. You are like the, the, the man with one talent. He said, well, I only have one talent. I better keep it and not use it. And he didn't use it. And the, when the king came, he said, where is the, the, the increase? He said, I didn't make any increase because I just hid this thing and waited for you to come back. There are many of you who are born again who are hiding the talent, riding the anointing. God is saying to you today, it is time you use your talent. God will multiply it. God will lead you. God will strengthen you. God will open doors and make a way where there is no way because God wants you to take him at his word. You have an assignment. You have a responsibility. You have a place in the divine economy. Because you have a place in the divine economy, God has made you a king. 
so that you can rule and reign over the affairs of men. The conflict today, this cosmic conflict, is about kingship. Because God made you a king and the devil wants to be king over you. And you either let the devil be king over you or you rise above him and rule over him. You, you rather allow, allow circumstances, people, and, you know, whether family, whoever it is, to control you. When you can rise above that and be controlled by the spirit and led by the spirit and be what God wants you to be. Because that's the only thing that matters. Who you are in Christ and what you can do through Christ and what God has called you to do. That's the only thing that matters. There is nothing else in these last days that matters. The most important thing is fulfilling the call of God upon you in these last days. Using your talent that God has given you. Not bearing your talent. You got to use it. If you don't use it, you lose it. You got to use the talent God has given you. Because God will open a way for you. God will open the doors for you. God will grant you favor. When you say, God, I am ready to do your will, he will take you one day at a time, one step at a time, one victory at a time. That's how good our God is. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. He's always present with us. You said, right, I'm not so sure that God wants me to be all these great things. I'm happy to be a nobody for Jesus. I'm happy to be a struggling nothing for Jesus. Well, Jesus has called you out of the bondage, out of slavery, like the children of Israel, into a glorious liberty in the land that flows with milk and honey. That's the plan of the Father, to take the slaves, the nobodies, the struggling nothings, and take them through to the place where they are vindicated, where God exalts himself through them. That's the sign that our God reigns. That's the sign that our God is alive, because he's going to use you. In spite of you, he's going to use you in spite of what people say. Because your time to be used by God is now. Your call is now. Your appointment is now. And you have to know that soon time will be over. We are in the last seven years. The greatest seven years of the greatest visitation from heaven. The greatest anointing is here. The power of God is here. God's moving. God's on the move. All I'm saying is get on board. Just get on board. Get on board right now. Because God who has prepared you for such a time as this. He wants you to just receive the anointing, the empowerment that comes from heaven. He will empower you. And when he empowers you and opens doors, no man can shut those doors. Because if God be for you, who can be against you? So nothing can be against you because God is for you. That means you have everything you need to be about the Father's business. You have everything. God has already provided everything. And he has already brought you into the order of Melchizedek to be a king and a priest. A priest who ministers to God in worship and adoration to the king. In the Holy of Holies, beholding the Ancient of Days. That's the place that God is calling you. Yes, you can behold the Lord. Yes, you can hear the Lord. Yes, you can know the will of God. You've got to make a choice. Because this is an invitation to you to come into the order of Melchizedek and to, to be a priest and a king unto the Lord your God. You say, but is this for everybody? It's for every child of God who desires to be what God wants them to be. God wants them to be bigger than what they are right now. God wants to take you from glory to glory, from victory to victory. What a glorious place. What a glorious place. He's, he says, Jesus speaking in Luke chapter 12, verse 32, talking to people like you and me, God's little people, God's struggling nobodies, God's faceless, nameless people. And he's speaking to the nameless nobodies. And he says them, to them this. This is to you and me. Fear not, little flock. For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Fear not, little flock. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God has pleasure in giving you the kingdom resources. God has pleasure in giving you the kingdom anointing. God has pleasure in giving you the kingdom 
He is ready to give you the kingdom because he has made you a king and a priest after the order of Melchizedek. He doesn't want you to be the tail. He wants you to be the head. Blessed coming in and blessed going out. Blessed be the name of the Lord. These blessings will overtake you. I'm talking about these blessings will overtake you. You are, you, you are walking with God. You don't have to chase after deals. You don't have to chase after money because your God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. It is done. It's provided for. Believe and receive. You doubt, you go without. It is time you believe and see the hand of God. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. I want you to get all excited because the Father is delighted in you. When he looks at you, he sees Jesus in you. Because he sees Jesus, he delights in giving you the kingdom, the kingdom resources, the kingdom appointments. He wants to give you that, that kingdom authority because he delights in you. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will sing over thee with joy. I'm telling you right now, you are the apple of God's eye. You are the object of his love. And he's singing a love song over you because he has made you a king and a priest after the order of Melchizedek. You are appointed by God. You are anointed by God. And the devil's lying to you. He's saying, you can't do that. You're no good. You can never rise up to that. That's not for you because the devil is the father of lies. It's time you take God at his word. And it's time you stop listening to people. You stop, stop listening to everybody, the social media, everything. Stop listening to all that because input affects output. You are what you think. As a man thinketh, so is he. Your thinking is being affected by what you put in, all the junk you put in, all the, the negativity that you put in. That's why you are, you are not able to rise up because you're full of all this stuff that been, you've been eating because you are what you eat. You are eating the wrong food. It's time for you to eat the word of God and believe the promises of God and become what God has called you to be right now. Tell that old devil, you can't lie to me no more. You can't hold me back no more because I know what God says about me I've been brought into the order of Melchizedek I am a king and I'm a priest unto God and my father delights in giving me the kingdom right now God delights to give you the kingdom he wants you to walk in the kingdom anointing he wants you to walk in the kingdom appointments why walk in depression anxiety and fear and discouragement and woundedness why walk in confusion when you can walk in the glorious liberty of the sons of God why allow the enemy, the circumstances of your life, to dictate who you are? You are not a victim of the circumstances you're in. You are a victor. You're a king. Rise above. The power of God is within you. He will show you the way. He will raise you up. This is why it's not by might nor by power. It's by the spirit. You got enter into the Holy of Holies as a priest of the order of Melchizedek. And when you come into the Holy of Holies, the Lord will, will, will remove your enemies. The Lord will remove the obstacles. The Lord will remove the hindrances. And the Lord will exalt you. He delights in exalting you. He is glorified when you are glorified. God wants you to be everything that Jesus is. He wants you to think like Jesus, to talk like Jesus, to act like Jesus. Because you are a priest after the order of Melchizedek. After the order of Jesus Christ, you've been conformed to his image. You are being changed from one degree of glory to another as you behold him. This is the call that God has placed upon an end time church. A glorious church without spot, without wrinkle. This is who you are. A king and a priest unto God. The devil wants to set up his own king. The antichrist. The false prophet. To rule over you. You can allow them to rule over you if you don't know who you are. That you are the king. And you are appointed. And you are anointed by God the Father. They will not be able to overcome you. Because you are a king. And you have kingdom authority. And you have kingdom dominion. And you have kingdom jurisdiction and the devil won't be able to touch you and touch that which belongs to you because you are too anointed you break every yoke of bondage with the anointing that's upon you oh the best days of your life are before you the greatest days of your life are before you because god delights in giving you the kingdom it's time you delight in yourself 
It's time you celebrate yourself. Celebrate your, your redemption. Celebrate your, 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 your life in the kingdom. Because your life in the kingdom is a life of glory. It's a life transformed. It's a life rising from glory to glory, from victory to victory. It's get bigger and bigger because your God inside of you is bigger than every second since you're in. It's bigger than every problem you're facing. That's why as a king, you have the power. The power. Because as a king, you have two things. You have authority and you have power. When, uh, when, a, when, a, when a policeman graduates and is commissioned, is given authority, and then they give him the firearm, the power, the gun, the, so that when he says stop, that's the authority that he has. Then if you don't stop, he uses the power that he has. So you must have two things. You must have the authority from God, the appointment from God, delegated authority. You must receive that authority, commissioned by God. But then when God commissions you, he gives you the power. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. That is the dunamis power to be able to step to stop the devil, because when you have the dunamis power, you can tell that devil, you stop, and you will have to stop. You can, you can do things that nobody can do because you have the authority, the delegated authority by God himself, and you have the power that God has given you. The power for execution of the will of God. The power to remove obstacles, lying spirits, withholding spirits, stealing spirits, the canker worm that has eaten all your resources. It's time for you to reclaim everything. It's time for you to not allow the devil to keep stealing from you. It's time to tell that old devil, you've taken too much of my joy, too much of my peace. You've taken everything out of my life, my marriage, my children, my grandkids. I'm saying to you, devil, you can't do that no more because I have jurisdiction. I have authority. Given me by God the Father. I have power and to call on the angels to come after you. I can release the fire from heaven and consume you. Because I am a king appointed by God. I am after the order of Melchizedek. I have the power to execute the will of my God. And there's not enough demons to stop me from doing the will of God. That God has called me, appointed me, and has given me to do. In Matthew 18, 18. I'm talking now about the power. The authority is in the order of Melchizedek. Who has been called to the order of Melchizedek? You have been called to the order of Melchizedek. You have been appointed in the order of Melchizedek. You have received the credentials to be the king and the priest unto God. God is pleased with you because when he looks at you, he sees only the blood of Jesus. You're complete in him. You are acceptable to him. He celebrates you. That is why he has given you now authority. The authority to get things done. Because right now you're being hindered. It's time you remove all the hindrances. In Matthew 18, 18, verily I say unto you. I mean you who are listening to me. This is a message from God to you. It is written, heaven and earth will pass away, but this word will not pass away. Is this word for today? Yes. It's valid today. You can activate this word today. You can stand upon this word today. What, is, what word is that? Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever Whenever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. You can bind all the, the, the stealing spirits, the spirits of depression, anxiety, of the addiction, frustration, disappointment. The, 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 the hostility, the, the stealing spirits that have come against you. The, the, the binding spirits that have held you back of poverty. 
You have said, God, if I, God will bless me. I'll be a blessing. Well, God has already blessed you. Just you bind those spirits of poverty, the spirits that has held you back, the stealing spirits, the lying spirits, all those spirits that have come against you, the spirits of accusation, condemnation. Act, you are con continu continually, you're continually being bound. You're not able to break away into the glorious liberty of the sons of God. And it is time you speak to those things and bind them in the name of Jesus. Because what you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. What you loose on earth will be loosened in heaven. That is the order of Melchizedek. The power that has been given to believers to bind the enemy. To loose the blessings of God. You have what it takes. You don't need anybody to help you. The Lord has already given you the power. Use the power that God has given you. And that power is in it is written. 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 That's where your power lies. It is written. That what I bind on earth will be bound in heaven. It is written. What I loose on earth will be loosened in heaven. And when I stand upon that promise, it will be done. You don't have to give excuses and say, God, I couldn't do that because you know my circumstances. You say, I gave you the power to change your circumstances. I gave you the anointing to break every yoke of bondage. I told you to bind things. I told you to loose things. Why didn't you do that? You don't need God come and help me. The help has already been given to you. The power has already been given to you. Use the power that God has given you. Give the devil what it belongs to him and give to God what belongs to God. You tell that devil, all these things are not mine. You take them. You get out of here because I command you right now. I bind you and I cast you out. You cannot come into my family. You cannot come into my body and make me sick. My body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. I bind you right now and I cast you out of my body because it is written. What I bind on earth is bound in heaven. What I loose on earth is loosened in heaven because I am in the order of Melchizedek. I'm a priest and a king, anointed and appointed by God. You cannot stop me. Therefore, sickness, you're bound and cast out. That sickness can kill you, can destroy you completely. Because if you let the devil work on you, he will work you to death. He will destroy everything that you have. He will steal everything from you. He will make you miserable because you let him do that. God says, I have given you the power to loose everything. I have given you the power to bind. What you bind on earth is bound in heaven. What you loose on earth is loosened in heaven. This is your responsibility. This is the power that you have as a believer. That's why God told me, prepare my people to walk in victory. Because the devil is coming. The Antichrist is coming. The false prophet is coming. The great tribulation is coming. You cannot stand against his powers until you know your identity in Christ. Until you know that you're a king with authority and dominion. And that you have the power to bind. You have the power to loose things. It's time to get excited because the greatest days of your life lies ahead of you. The devil has tried to hold you back to contain you. He cannot contain the anointing. He cannot contain the revelation. This revelation will liberate you from yesterday's problems, from the addic addictions of yesterday, from the confusion of yesterday, from the failures of yesterday. This anointing will break every yoke of bondage. But you've got to believe. If you doubt, it's not going to happen. You've got to believe that God has given you the authority to bind and to lose things. You have to take God at his word. Oh, I wish, I wish. No, there's no time for wishing. If wishes were horses, beggars would ride. We don't live in the wish world. We live in the power that raised up Christ from the dead. We live in the glory of the King of Kings. We live with the King of Kings, the Lord Jesus Christ. He has made us to be joint heirs with him, to exercise the same authority that God gave to, to him. We are joint heirs with him. That means we can do all things. So there is no place for, oh God, I couldn't do it because I didn't have any money. He says, I delight in the prosperity of my servants. Lose that money. Lose everything. What, what are you waiting for? Nobody's going to do it for you because God has given you the power. God has given you the anointing. God has given you the appointment. God has brought you into the kingdom for such a time as this. What you loose on earth will be loosened in heaven. It is time now.
to walk in your sonship identity as a king and a priest under God. It is time for you now to walk in the fullness of your calling as a son, your sonship. It's not about servanthood. It's about sonship. Oh, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a servant of God. I'm a worm saved by grace. You're not a worm saved by grace. You're a child of God saved by grace. You're a saint. You're, sanct you're sanct sanctified. You're, you're completely clean and holy through the blood of Jesus. You can be what Jesus called you to be. You must believe. You cannot experience the power of God without believing. You must believe it is written. It is time to leave the seminates, preach to Christianettes. It is time to go back to the Word of God to find out who you are, what you can do, and become what God has called you to be, a king, and begin to think like a king, and begin to act like a king, because you are a king. God is with you, angels on assignment, waiting to back your losing. What you lose on earth, the angels will, will carry out your word. Why? Because when God gives authority to the king, he has the soldiers to execute his executive order. I say you have angels on assignment to execute your divine order. You can give executive order because you are appointed. You are anointed. Go ahead and make that executive order and tell the devil, these are the orders I give you from now on. They're bound on earth. They're bound in heaven. They are loosened on earth. They're loosened in heaven. And I'm telling you right now, you can't stop this because angels are on assignment to make it happen. That is why I say to you, it is time you stop all these excuses. Because there is no place for excuses. He has made us adequate in Christ Jesus. He has given us all things pertaining to life and godliness. What you loose on earth is loosened in heaven. What you bind on earth is bound in heaven. What are you waiting for? I'm inviting you right now to a new paradigm, to a new beginning, to a new day, to a new adventure. I'm calling you right now to look around and see what the devil has been doing to you, to your wife, to your family, to your kids, to your neighborhood, to your nation, to your generation. And it's time you stand up as a king on the earth and say, I'm a king after the order of Melchizedek. And I tell you, devil, you can't do that because I bind you right now. And I'm calling on angels to come and execute the will of my father because I exercise the authority I have received of God, delegated to me by the Ancient of Days. And you cannot stop what God has has said through me or is saying through me because God is with me, in me, and through me. As he is, so am I. The same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in me. Therefore, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can bind everything that has been hindering me, hindering my family, and I can make a path where there is no path because I have the authority. I have the dominion. I have the blood to cover me. I have the blood to wash me clean. I have the Holy Spirit to guide me. Therefore, I cannot allow you, Satan, to torment my family. I cannot allow you, Satan, to torment my friends. I cannot allow you, Satan, to hang around here. You can't come near this family. You can't come near my life. I am redeemed with the blood. Oh, I'm covered with the blood. I'm washed in the blood. I am filled with the Holy Ghost. The power of God lives in me. I am what God says I am. I can change the future. I'm saying to you, today, you make the decree. Today, you speak to that situation. If you say to this mountain, be thou removed. This mountain will be removed. I said, if you say to this mountain, be removed, this mountain shall be removed. It doesn't matter how big the mountain is. Mount Everest. You can speak to Mount Everest and say, Mount Everest, I come to you in the name of Jesus and I'm speaking to you right now. You be removed. You can change your future. You can change every situation because greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. He says, if you speak to the mountain by faith and you say, be removed, it will be removed. I am telling you right now, there is not enough mountains that will stop you because you can remove every mountain in the name of Jesus. 
Jesus, every mountain of opposition, every mountain of challenge, every mountain of impossible, everything that's impossible today is possible with God. You can remove the impossible in the name of Jesus. It is time for you to be what God has called you to be. It is time for you to realize that God is who you say he is and that you are what God says he is. You, you are. You are in him and through him you can do all things. I am saying in these last days, they will be days of the greatest demonstration of the power of God. The spirit of Elijah is coming. The demonstration is coming. The manifestations are coming. The manifestation of the sons of God on the earth is here. Men walking in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Men walking in the joy of the Lord. Men walking with the authority to stop every power of darkness. This is the time of showdown. It's a showdown. It's a glorious showdown because the sons of God are rising up to the occasion and I speak to you right now it is time you take God at his word you are greater than what you think you are you can do what God says you can do because God is with you God is within you you take him at his word you say I am a priest after the order of Melchizedek I am anointed I am appointed I have authority I have dominion I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me you got to take that it's serious. You've got to take God at his word because we have so little time left. So little time left. So little time left. It's no time for excuses. It's no time for you to explain to me why you can't do it because there is nothing, nothing on earth. Nothing means nothing, nothing, nothing on earth that can stop you. There's not a devil big enough to stop you. Your God is bigger. Your God is greater. Your God is able. Your God loves you. May you take your place in the divine economy. May you take your place in this generation and be a blessing to this generation. May you take your place and be a channel of the blessings of God. May you take that place of authority and dominion and begin to demonstrate the power, the glory of the King of Kings, that men may see his glory. Men may see the goodness of God. Men may see the love of God. You are the agent of heaven. You are the representative of heaven. You are the extension of heaven because you are the extension of heaven. He wants you to take heaven to every person. He wants to take you the power of Jesus to every person alive. May God bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus. There are men and women right now that are believing you, that are taking you at your word, that are saying, God, let your will be done. Father, I pray right now, right now, right now, I pray that the Spirit of God will come upon them right now, that they may break away from the, from the shackles of yesterday, from the limitations of yesterday. The devil has contained them. The devil has held them back. And I'm saying right now, my Father, break every yoke of bondage. Let them rise up victorious, triumphant. Let them be giant killers, Father. God, I thank you that you are the God. God that was with David to kill Goliath. You are the God that walked with, with the apostles you, into cities and nations that were hostile to the gospel. You are the same God that is with us right now. That was with Meshach, Shadrach, and Bed Negro in their fairness. You are the God of Daniel in, in, in the lion's den. You are the God that says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Therefore, I release the anointing right now. I release the anointing upon the people of God right now. In the name of Jesus. 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 Jesus of Nazareth, the son of the living God. I release a fire upon the earth. I declare that a fire of God will consume nations. Because from this day, the sons of God will rise up to the order of Melchizedek and release the power of God on this generation. In Jesus' name I pray.